Hey, welcome back. On uh, my last video, I mentioned we would be doing some prospecting in the creek, and I did try. I went through much suffering, but um, I haven't been able to get back there because we've been having lots of forest fires around here, and it's been really smoky, and it still is terribly smoky right now. There's a fire a few miles away from here, so the area where I've been wanting the prospect uh, is closed for now, but we will get back there eventually. So today... Um, I'm here just, uh, by some bedrock here, and all we're gonna do today is I got the, uh, pan and a, uh, classifier, and we're going to just scoop up and just kind of sample around this, uh, rocky cliff area here. And I'm not too far from civilization, so you might hear some, uh, cars in the background and this cliff area here um the rock talking about the bedrock here if you remember from my last video i mentioned um the ancient faulting uh detachment faulting which caused shearing which created a uh, mylonite rock all this cliff area here has all been myelinated. It's all been sheared. It's all rock that's been sheared from uh, the faulting that happened here millions of years ago, and which eventually uh, this rock surfaced. But the main rock here is, it's called gneiss. And gneiss is a metamorphic rock, which I mentioned. It's the highest grade, besides uh, um, whatever the other one was called. But there are... Uh, in this myelinited rock, there's tons of uh, hydrothermal deposits, along with uh, granite intrusions and pegmatite intrusions, and there's all kinds of mineralization in this cliff area. So right here, I thought would be a good place to sample. Zooming in on here, you can see all those reds and orange, like irons and. Um, different minerals that are in there so that that looks pretty good right there we have these I'm not sure what these are but there's like these they're like little crystal mineral um, things here I don't never really seen those so I don't really know what they are they almost look like um, uh, biotite biotite books kind of like mica except uh, biotite is black and mica or um, muscovite is white or that you know that flaky silvery color I'm not sh quite sure what this is but there's also um these pegmatite or quartz mixtures from hydrothermal fluids that were going through this myelinite zone and it created all kinds and sorts of deposits and there also are um oh uh, right here you can see there's a big quartz quartz vein right here so it looks pretty pretty good right here. Um, the rock's kind of the rock's kind of all broken up right here and fallen down. Um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, scoop up a lot of this material here, and hopefully I'll pan it up and we'll find some gold. But there's also uh, here's an interesting uh, rock here. This is mainly, uh, I think it's called Hornblende. And in it, if you look really closely, are little red garnets. There's one right there by my thumb. I don't know if you can see that, but what these um, were uh, millions of years ago, but um, all this rock was just sedimentary rock. And it was in a rift basin in the ocean. And as the crust was falling apart, basaltic intrusions went up and through the cracks of the sedimentary rock and then eventually those basalt intrusions cooled into what they call gabbrio that's an intrusive um, igneous rock and then when me metamorphism took place and this rock began to change when this all this rock finally changed into gneiss the the saltic intrusions, or the gabbrio, I believe it's called, uh, changed into the uh, the hornblende mineral here with uh, all these garnets. So this is just uh, believed to be uh, metamorphic, metamorphic uh, 
Gabrio intrusion. That's what uh, a lot of these came from. So, I guess we'll uh, I'll get to work. Here's another example of the uh, horn blend with the garnets. Don't know if you can see that, but that's that. So, what I'm gonna do? Get my shovel here, and I'm just gonna scoop up. my classifier. Shake all this material and then I just get the uh, bigger um, rocks I don't need and I just throw those aside. Right here looks like good material. I forgot to bring my rock hammer. I believe there's lots of iron in this. There's a lot of rust colored rocks. I can, uh, most of them you can just disintegrate between your fingers. Some of these uh, contain like rotten gar garnets and things too. But uh, maybe if I. Okay, I'm gonna go pan these materials out, and if I find anything, I'll show you the results. Okay, so I panned out my materials, and I believe I have found a little bit flower gold, I believe. It's really, really small, it's like a powder. Zoom in on it, right there. I don't know if you can see it, but it kind of blends in with the sand, but there's really, really small pieces. It's like I guess that's what they call flower gold. It's really, really small, but it's there. All right, get to get you guys to see this a little better. It's really hard when it's this fine to completely separate it from the sands, but I did my best. Oh, jeez, I always do that. There you have it. Really fine, really fine, fine gold. Really small. That is what I guess you would call flower gold. Really tiny. Now, I did make a mistake here. And what the mistake was is you guys saw me digging. Doing my diggings right there. But then I made the mistake of, uh, it wasn't too much of a big mistake, but then I started scraping stuff up from uh, right there. And uh, so now, um, I mean, it probably doesn't matter, but... Um, if I was doing sampling, I wouldn't know if it came from this or up here. But in this case, all of this fell from right here, so it's pretty evident that most of it's right here. And this looks excellent. Excellent material. It's really loose. Right here, you have a, it's like a quartz, kind of like a quartz vein. It's got um, some other minerals in it, so it might be just a, some kind of hydrothermal plane here. Um, but this stuff here, is really easy to break. It's got lots of reds, it's got lots of mica, uh, no, not micas necessarily, but um, yeah, micas. It has pyrite in it as well. And i um, um, not sure, I can't really remember how pyrite and gold work together, but um, 
Usually when there's pyrite, you have a, there might be a chance of you finding gold, which I just did. Really small, really, really small though. But um, yeah, I'll, uh, I, I guess we'll hit this again. It's really easy, chunky material. We'll see what we get. Okay, let's get some more, shall we? Uh, so I believe it's um, this stuff right here. Yeah. Well, I should have brought the rock hammer, but it's so soft it's working anyways. Now this stuff might actually have uh, some stuff in it, this quartz here. This might be worth uh, crushing up, but for now I'm just going to leave it here and I can always come back for it. So. Yeah. Yeah, this stuff here isn't quite quartz. It's some kind of hydrothermal, I'm gonna guess. Um, pro po possibly near a pegmatite. Um, it is foliated, and this is a myelinated zone, so that's normal. So this is the stuff I've been breaking away here. It looks like a horn blend. So there's like a this looks like a horn blend layer right over the top of the uh, hydrothermal quartz or feldspar here, or pegmatite. And there's another uh, veining underneath it. This stuff here might be good too. Take that. I don't know if you can see that. Classify down the material. Here's a good example of what I mean. It's like this, uh, I'm gonna call it like, uh, looks like it's something near a pegmatite here. There's all, there's all kinds of minerals in there and impurities, but on the top portion of these uh, veins here is this uh, dark layer, which is the horn blend. And that's where I, what I've been digging out. So we'll see if that's where the gold is. Right here is what I've been digging out right here, right above here. See, there's the, uh, this is the vein, and then right above here is that dark layer. And that's what I've been working out right here, digging out. So, we'll see if there's any more in there. The next part I might try digging out is that layer right over there, that all those uh, orange and reds in the rock right there. Here, I'll show you another quick look at this stuff. There are lots of, um, oh, come on. Um, there's lots of irons, there's lots of rust going on, oxidation. There's lots of reds, that is a very good sign right there. And here's that, like, veining feldspar quartz from, like, the hydrothermals, and um, also the myelinating that's been going on. This is, I haven't been working in this area. The area I've been working on is down here. And you can see how red the soil is. That's very good. That's very good. I like to see that. And there's this uh, that hydrothermal vein, um, or just it could even just be a regular band from the. It could just be a band banding from the gneiss and myelinating, because gneiss will form these uh, feldspar bands and quartz. They're banded rock from the. Um, metamorphism but the next place I might try to work on it's a little hard, harder rock though so I won't be able to break it as easily this is more for the rock hammer so I might come back here um, there is some loose dirt right there I might get 
but yeah, this is a pretty good spot, it looks like. Um, I might take up some more of these, this uh, pile here, but right now I'm just focusing on this right here. This really loose stuff in here looks really excellent. Especially that, I'm going to make sure to grab all this. But um, yeah, I'm going to finish uh, classifying all my material, digging this out a little bit, and I'll paint it down, and I'll show you the results again. Well, halfway down to the uh, lake to pan out my material, I slipped and dumped about half of my pan out. Smooth. Anyways, um, surprisingly, uh, the, the most of it might have been dumped out, but surprisingly, I didn't find any of um, any more from this spot here. This is the part I was digging out right here, as you can see. Um, there wasn't. I didn't really find anything, but then again, I dumped half of it out. Um, the, where I did find probably most of it was down here, which means it could have came from anywhere up here so eventually I'll be coming back and uh, reworking this probably with my rock hammer we could probably take a whole bunch back with us and uh, crush it up and this will do it for today's video as I said it took me forever to <laughs> to make another one I, I did try though it is terribly smoky where I am hopefully you guys have nice sunny clear weather and I'll see you whenever I can make another video.